So is the Lamet. It's the center of the Aleph base. And just as the heart sustains the body, so does heartfelt learning of Torah sustain the spirit. It was interesting in this book, The Wisdom of the Alphabet, it also says that in the days of scripture, God taught his ways to Israel through his prophets. Now I thought that this was really amazing because they also said that this word Lamed also represent king of kings. I thought that was quite interesting. Then man could understand history and perceive it as the language of God's will. Now in my study of the school of the prophets, the prophets were historians. They understood history as being perceived as the language of God's will. Every nation has a history behind it. You have a history. They're beginning to find out, amen, that you can get into systems that um, understand genograms where some folks can even track almost when they'll die. They'll notice that, you know, sometimes all the males in their family dies between 50 and 55. Sometimes they notice that some of them all die of tragic accidents or certain things hit or latches on because the history of your past is repeated in the future. There are certain cycles that are set in motion. Well, let me take you into this in the scripture before you say he done gone off into some psychology and I think he's going a little bit into parapsychology. No, but when we begin to look in the scripture, amen, we see that Abraham started a cycle. Abraham lied and said Sarah was his sister. Almost got, I believe, Abimelech killed. Because he got ready to touch this covenant woman. And so we begin to see that after Abraham, his son Isaac told the same lie about Rebecca. Until one of the leaders of that day saw him sporting with Rebecca. That's what the Bible says. Then we see Abraham, Isaac, now Jacob lied and deceived his father Isaac and snatched up his brother's birthright and stole the blessing. And so Jacob lied and deceived. And then Jacob's sons lied and deceived him. See how that generational thing just followed from one generation to the other? And they lied concerning Joseph. And then when Joseph got into his place, you say, man, he didn't escape that particular thing that was following, but then he turned around and deceived his brother in. So we can understand the will of God in history. If some of us would come to grips with this word of God, amen, we would even understand the reason for the diaspora. Amen. And even you have some that are so interested in trying to return back to their roots and worshiping African gods, amen, and getting into a poly theistic type of religion, amen, worshiping many gods. That's the reason we're in the mess today. For every time Israel got off into worshiping other gods except for the true and living God, God allowed her to go into captivity. Well, let's look at that. You don't have to take my word for it. Amen. We begin to understand that without prophecy, it remains for man. Now, isn't it interesting that this Hebrew book, these people are not enlightened, enlightened concerning Christ nor his work. 
These were Jews that don't even believe that Jesus was the Messiah. But listen to what they said. Without prophecy, it remains for man to search for God's hand in his conduct of events. For it is an article of faith that divine providence is always at work. In this sense, God is a teacher using events to show what is called for, for from man. Now when we begin to understand the concept of the Lamet, we begin to look at Deuteronomy 29, and I love this. Let's go 29, 27. Now Lamet means what? Teaching and learning. In Deuteronomy 29, verse 27, it reads, And the anger of the Lord was kindle, kindled against this land to bring upon it all the curses that are written in this book. And the Lord rooted them out of their land in anger and in wrath and in great indignation and cast them into another land as it is this day. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever that we may do all the words of this law. Now when we begin to understand this, this word Lamed, teaching and learning, alludes to the manner in which the supreme teacher watches over his charges with strict lessons. Even when a, when a severe ordeal such as exile is brought upon Israel, it serves as an instructive purpose. See, the mess you are in is designed to teach you. The mess you are in is designed to give you a lesson. You've got to examine why you are in the mess that you're in, and then you understand not to do that again. Amen. Touch your neighbor and say, understand why you are in the mess. Love it. The teaching, the learning. Amen. The purpose of this suffering is to arouse Israel to change its faulty attitude and to repent. Whatever jam up I'm in, I've got to examine why I'm in it. Whatever mess I'm passing through, I've got to find out why am I in it. See, once you can understand why you're in the mess, then he gives you a message. In fact, the large lamet, or learning if we want to look at it, indicates to the Jews that the length of the exile depends on them. For it will not end until its lesson is learned. Touch your neighbor and say, your mess is not going to be over until you learn the lesson. See, many of you don't want to enroll in the school of hard knocks, amen. Many of you don't want to go through anything, amen. You're rebuking the devil, but the devil is not your problem. You're the problem. See, when you begin to realize that the mess that you're in, amen, the salvation you need is a change of mind. You need to just make a turn. You need to change your attitude. Touch your name and say, change your attitude. For it will not end until the lesson is learned. Wherever the Jewish people are to be found away from their original homeland, they are there not by chance. But I love the way they put this. The director of history cast them there to teach the nation belief in one God. Touch your neighbor and say, you're part of the drama. 
touch your neighbor and say, the director has put you in the place you're in.